So today's video is going to be a little bit of a sadder type video. Um, I'm going to try not to cry, but I make no guarantees. Um, it is all about my miscarriages. I've had a couple and um, how those left my body. Um, one I had to pass naturally and the second one I had a DNC for. Um, I have done my share of crying. If I seem like callous or like, you know, cold in this video, it's because I'm trying really hard to not get emotional. So don't be like, man, she looks like she doesn't even care or whatever. That's just be nice in the comments. Realize I've been through a lot these last few years. Um, so let's start with, I was on the pill for 10 years. I'm just going to talk about all of my pregnancies and then you'll kind of get a feel for it. Um, but basic outline, we got married in 2015, um, November, 2015. We didn't try until summer of 2016. I found out I was pregnant in, um, July of 2016 with um, a baby and um, on August 10th 2016 I was in the ER bleeding and I was about six six and a half weeks and um, it didn't measure to size and they told me um, based on my HCG declining that with the bleeding combined with it not measuring to size that I was having a miscarriage I ended up just bleeding it out at home they sent me home and I just took some pain pills and put a heating pad on my stomach and um, I passed that. I was also told not to get pregnant again for a few months um, till everything reset itself and my body was ready. I never got a cycle back and I took a pregnancy test and I was pregnant. So um, that was July 22nd, I think it was. I found out I was pregnant. August 10th, I was having a miscarriage in the ER. And then September, I think it was September 8th, I found out I was pregnant again. And I was, I was sure because in between the two, uh, the miscarriage and the other pregnancy, I had my HCG drawn and it went back down to zero and I did just for fun, just for, you know, making myself feel better. I did take a pregnancy test at home and got a negative test like between the two. And I was like, okay, like now I'm good. So if I get a positive, I know it's positive. And guess what? I got pregnant, I took a positive test. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I went to the doctor. We had a scare because at seven and a half weeks I went for my ultrasound and there was no baby. So they say, um, I still have problems understanding this. This is Daisy. This is the 15 month old daughter that I have. So what I don't understand is I had an, I had an ultrasound at like six weeks because I was scared from the last pregnancy and they understood that. And I had a little bit of spotting and cramping and they were like, let's just take an ultrasound. Let's just see and make sure everything's okay. And they drew my HCG and the numbers look good. They drew my progesterone numbers were fine. It was like 18 for my progesterone at like six weeks pregnant. And they're like, all right. So they look in the ultrasound and they're like, I see a fetal pole. I see a yolk sac. I see this and that but uh, not really a baby yet, but it's still really early, so I'll go home and do whatever. And then at seven and a half weeks, I came back for the ultrasound, and they were like, it's a blighted ovum, like there is no baby, it's an empty, you know, sac, and I'm like, oh, okay. So they offered me um, Cytotec or medicine to pass the, the tissue at home, and I refused it. That was a Friday afternoon, and they were like, okay, come back next week, and we'll just confirm again. And I came back on a Wednesday and there Daisy was 170 beats per minute was her heartbeat and she was fine. So um, I understand the value of rechecking and getting a second opinion, having a different ultrasound tech you, um, getting your blood drawn to check your numbers. I have been poked and prodded so much in these last few years. Luckily, I work for a company, I get free lab work, but um, so many HCG and progesterone tests, it's like not even funny. Uh, anyway, so that was kind of annoying, but you know, it is what it is. Like they told me it was a, I took time off work. Like it was a miscarriage. Like I was told I was having a second miscarriage. Keep in mind that was August and October, or August 10th and September 30th, the same year, 2016. I was told I was having a miscarriage again, like six weeks later, seven weeks later, whatever it was. So October 5th, they were like, actually there is a baby and yay. Okay. So I was sick the whole pregnancy, had Daisy May of 2017 at 41 weeks. She was nine pounds. So all was good. Um, I breastfed. I got back on the pill as soon as I was able to. I took um, the uh, progesterone only mini pill, as they call it, um, for, I don't know, nine months, something like that, 10 months. I took it till April of 2018. Uh, we did not want a baby. We were not planning on having a baby. And my doctor previously had said, wait until your C-section. I did have a C-section, by the way, in May 23rd of 2017 with Daisy. Um, they said, we want you to be one year postpartum before you get pregnant again, because your uterus needs time to heal itself and blah, blah, blah. We were like, that sounds good. Like, we don't want to have them too close together anyway. So um, in April, I got off the pill. 
in May I was still breastfeeding. I started slowly like going down and down and down and down. May 23rd she was allowed to have cow's milk because she turned one. Um, and then I started breastfeeding less and less and cow's milk more and more until June 23rd when she turned 13 months. That is when I had no more breast milk, no more breastfeeding. I was just using up freezer stash as she was getting more and more used to cow's milk. But um, June 4th I got my first postpartum period and June 21st I conceived, uh, I think around then, and um, June 22nd maybe. And then um, I went in at five weeks to my OBGYN. Yes, I went to the same practice that I went to for the first issue with um, the blighted ovum, but it wasn't and all that crap. And they also had a problem where they sent my lab work to the wrong lab and it cost me, almost cost me $1,800, but I was like, oh hell no. So I ended up getting it down to $100, but anyway, so they messed up. They messed up the ultrasound, they messed up with billing once. So I was like really upset with them and then I went to them again because I'm stupid and didn't want to go through the work of finding a new doctor. They're convenient and I know where they deliver and all that stuff. So I went in at five weeks and they've tested my um, HCG and it looked good. It was 975 and they tested my um, progesterone and that was a little low. The nurse's words on the phone were it's a little low and we'd like you to supplement with a progesterone pill. It was like 200, I don't know if it's milligrams or micrograms or whatever the units are, 200 um, per night before bed. You just take a pill orally. I'm like, okay. My progesterone came back at 8.3. And then two days later, they did my HCG again and it did double. It's supposed to double every 48 to 72 hours. It went up to, from 975 to 2060. So it did more than double in 48 hours. My progesterone came back at 8.25, so it didn't really go up. She's like, I'm not surprised it didn't go up, but if you're now that you're supplementing, it should be fine. Um, she's like, progesterone, low progesterone in itself isn't the cause of miscarriages. It's there are underlying causes, and we can tell because there's pro low progesterone. But she's like, I've seen way lower than yours if it like result in a healthy pregnancy, and I've seen way high have a miscarriage. So she's like, it doesn't mean anything. Just keep supplementing, and we'll be fine. Come back when you're eight weeks, and we'll check you again. So I went back at. Um, seven and a half weeks ish something like that and um, they drew my HCG again and it was 65,000 so my numbers were looking awesome HCG wise they didn't retest progesterone because there was no reason to um, they did an ultrasound and the ultrasound tech and the doctors at this office didn't do um, like communicate like the tech does their thing and then they like hand, write everything up in the little you know screen and then they go and the doctor sees you separately so they didn't have any communication just what was she wrote and the tech was at lunch I guess when we actually got in to see the doctor like they were back-to-back -back appointments you know one was like 11 30 the other one was like 12 or something but when the doctor went to read the notes and then she wanted to go talk to the ultrasound tech the ultrasound tech was not available but she wrote many cysts in sac um, possible molar pregnancy and she saw a sack and she saw, we saw a flutter, but there wasn't, it was too small. It was six weeks, not eight or seven and a half that I should have been. And she couldn't hear a heartbeat and she couldn't even see the lines of a heartbeat. Like it was so small, but there was a flutter. And um, I was like, okay. So the doctor didn't, or the, it was actually a nurse practitioner. She didn't even get to like confirm, like talk to her. Like, why would you say molar pregnancy? That's weird that you said that, you know, she was gone. So I was like, okay. So she's like, you know what? Let's retest your HCG again in a couple days and let's just see, make sure it's going up. Well, it went up by like 2,000. It was like 65,000, 67,000 or something like that. It was like really close. She goes, it should be doubling. She's like, at eight or nine weeks pregnant, it does stop increasing at this high of a rate. It doesn't double every 48 to 72 hours anymore. So that wouldn't alarm me if everything on the ultrasound looked okay. But because the ultrasound was still like measuring two weeks, a week too small and your dates don't line up. And I know when I conceive because I'm crazy and I pee on like a thousand strips and I have them all taped and I'm like wild. Like I know, I know, okay. My app, my basal body temperature, my cervical mucus, everything. Like I know when I conceived. Um, and she was like, well, then your dates don't line up. You're not measuring to size, like something's up. So I got labs drawn on like a Wednesday. I use the patient portal. And uh, I was able to view my results from the lab um, the next morning. Like by like 5 a.m. I had my results. And they didn't call me. That was on a Wednesday until Monday. Monday. I didn't want to wait for that shit. I'm sorry. I didn't. So on by Friday, I was in with a different practice. And I went and got an ultrasound. And he had my HCG drawn again. And it went up by like a couple thousand. Or it went down. Or whatever. It was like a very small difference. And he was like... Mm, I love this new doctor, but he was just like, you know what? That in itself isn't reason enough for me to think you're having a miscarriage. Low progesterone, HCG not doubling, 
I mean, I could look past that if the ultrasound shows what we want to see. So let's go ahead and do an ultrasound. So he did the transvaginal ultrasound, and he goes, interesting. He goes, here's the sac, and then he moves the wand, and he goes, and here's the other sac. And I'm like, what? So here I am at, you know, I was supposed to be eight weeks pregnant. And I'm like, twins? Twins? And he goes, that's why your HCG looks so good, or so high, so fast, because you are pregnant with twins. And I was like, oh. my husband's standing next to me. We're like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? We're going to have three kids under the age of two, like 21 months apart, three kids. Um, he goes, but one of them doesn't look like it's viable. He's like, I'm pretty sure this one isn't viable. And he shows us in the sack. It's not, um, there's no heartbeat. There's stuff in there. But he, he's like, I don't see what I need to see at this point. If you were truly eight weeks pregnant and you know your dates for sure, this one doesn't look good. He goes, but this one, there is that flutter. It's flickering. He's like, I can't get a good view of it. Like, I don't know if you you know, everything's in the wrong. It's, it's just like if your bladder is too full or not full enough or I'm not sure, but it's not looking great. But he's like, let's redraw your progesterone, you know, HCG again. Let's do this and that. And he's like, come back in a week. He's like, but I'm pretty sure one of these isn't viable. And the second one, I'm also pretty sure. But he's like, if you were my wife or my daughter, he's like, I would tell you, I'm not sure enough to give you prescription to end this pregnancy at this point. I'm not sure enough to schedule a DNC. I'm not, he's like, I, you know, don't call in from work. He's like, just keep going about pretending you're pregnant, acting like you're pregnant, not pretending. He didn't say that. Acting as if you're pregnant, don't drink alcohol, don't take aspirin. He's like, just, but he's like, I wouldn't be, you know, surprised. He's like, I'm, I'm thinking that's what's happening, but we need to see if there's any change in your numbers and if your ultrasound changes in a week. I went back at nine and a half weeks or nine weeks pregnant and no change. Actually, it's worse. The um, the one sac doesn't look like it's, it looks like it's less formed, like it's disintegrating or like collapsing on itself. Um, it looks like there's less tissue. At this point, I'm still not bleeding. He told me to stop taking the progesterone. He's like, you're likely going to bleed on your own um, now that you're not taking progesterone. So... Um, don't be surprised, and if it happens at home over this weekend or whatever, um, let's go ahead and schedule the DNC because there is no change. This is this is not good. There's no heartbeat. It didn't grow. It's done, right? He's like, you probably start to bleed out, but let's go ahead and schedule your DNC for Monday, and then if if you happen to be bleeding by the time, we won't do it, and um, whatever. So I went back, and I, on Monday, I showed up for my DNC, still not bleeding, and I had noticed my my symptoms had started going away. I was no longer dry heaving, um, my boobs didn't hurt, I, you know, could start eating more foods, I, um, I wasn't as tired. Some of the symptoms were nice to have them go away, I'm not going to lie, but I would have preferred to carry this pregnancy to term. Um, anyway, so I had my DNC on Monday, August 13th. I was 10 weeks, basically, but obviously they weren't measuring. One of them wasn't measuring at all, really, and the other one was only like six weeks. Um, but so... Um, I got to the hospital around 11 for a one o'clock procedure. They got me all in the IV. It was really painful. I've had IVs before. You guys know I have MS. I've been hospitalized multiple times. Um, I've had a baby. I've had lots of, lots and lots of blood, uh, pokes and blood draws at this point. And this IV was awful. It was on my hand. I bruised like crazy. Um, it was, I was like, no, something's wrong. It's not right. Take it out. Take it out. And she's like, I'm almost in. I'm like, no, uh-uh. So she'd pull it out and she'd like immediately, you know, stop the blood. And she was like, oh, huh. You know, like it wasn't right. I told her, I was like, it's not right. It's, you can't, no, 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 no. It was like out of 10, when the other nurse did it on my arm, you still see the bruise. I don't know if you can see, but still see the bruise. Um, the other nurse did it and it was like a three out of 10 for pain. This bitch, nine out of 10 on my hand. I was like, no. So my husband's like, remind that, remind me next time you have an IV, only do it in your elbow area because your hands every time, like when I was in the hospital with they, having Daisy and I had to get IV antibiotics and stuff, they tried my hand and it was just awful. So I'm like, okay, remind me of that. We'll remember this for next time because I do have these periodically for MS or for delivering a next baby. Anyway, so I had the DNC. I was crying so much that last week and it was awful. I was crying at nothing I was crying because our kid was sick it was awful like she had to go to urgent care twice the pediatrician three times urgent uh, emergency room once 
She was on antibiotics. She was not sleeping well. She was in pain. She had like 104 fever. We were giving her Tylenol Motrin. It was just bad. She grew two new teeth in the last month, and I, I was at my breaking point. You know, as a mom, if you've ever been there, where you're just like, I can't handle your whining. I can't handle you right now. I need to leave. Like, I need to get out of here. You stay here. I'm going. And she'd be like, Mama, Mama. And I'd be like, Oh, you know, like you just you can't do it. Like you are not in your right mind. And usually our support system is my mom helps, you know, one day a week, my husband's mom helps like four or five days a week. And then we have support, you know, all the time. Well, my mom was out of town for work um, a lot of this month. And my mother in law was busy with other things. She had family in town that she was helping and she had other obligations. She couldn't help us. And Daisy was sick and whiny and I had, I would cry like three times before 9 a.m. because Daisy would wake up at 3 a.m. and not go back to sleep and I would just be like, are you kidding me right now? Like, I need to mourn this. I need to, you know, but I had Monday, my procedure on Monday, I had the whole week off. Um, so I had Saturday, Sunday, and then, you know, a whole week. And so that was nice, um, but I don't feel rested. I didn't feel rested. The procedure itself, um, apparently you're not supposed to eat or drink. Um, I drank. I didn't realize I wasn't supposed to drink water. Just like some water, not like gallons, but I had like eight ounces two or three hours before I was supposed to have the procedure. And they were like, nope, go home, come back in a few hours because you can't, like I had to come back at like 4 p.m. And so I did that, no eating or drinking, that was miserable. They um, got me right back in, right into a gown, did everything that they could. They left the IV in capped with a bandage and let me go home and then I had to come back. Um, yeah, so I had it on Monday, the pain after I was fine, I didn't throw up or anything. It was emotional. I cried multiple times that morning before. And then after they told me I had to go home, I cried. I cried when they did the IV. I mean, I must have cried 10 times in that day. Um, but when I got home, it was later than we thought. We were supposed to be home by like three or four and have Daisy home. My mother-in-law was going to bring her to us. Sorry. Um, but that didn't end up happening. Um, so then we ended up having um, her come home at like seven or eight. And all I ate was like pudding and applesauce and like liquidy foods. I didn't want anything like too hard or heavy. I hadn't eaten all day. I was so hungry, but like I didn't feel well. I was on Percocet and whatever they gave me from the procedure. Um, I slept okay. Um, my husband helped. You know, I didn't carry the baby or anything for a couple days. And um, I took Percocet from Monday and Tuesday. By Wednesday, it made me crazy. It made me not want to sleep. But it was like I was like in this like fog like dazed while I was sleeping I was like I was half asleep but not and I couldn't even tell if I was sleeping it was like really weird and not restful and then the next day I woke up like yeah 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 like I've been like on caffeine all night like I had a caffeine drip and I was like whoo I was cleaning and doing too much and stuff but the blood was nothing I mean I was surprised like I wouldn't have even if I had worn a pad the whole week I had I didn't wear the same one all week okay but if I had it would have not filled up the entire pad in a whole like five days so it was lighter than a period it was crazy so anyway I felt pretty good by like Thursday I was just on ibuprofen and I felt okay I was going out and about I was able to drive again and my daughter was still going to grandma's over the daytime because I was supposed to be recovering from surgery and I got stuff done around the house I felt pretty good well Saturday we went shopping I went to like Ross and stuff with my cousin we had gone on a 30 minute walk in the morning just 30 minutes it was like dipping my toe back into like getting in physical Nothing crazy. Um, the restrictions were simply no bath, no swimming, no sex, no tampons, no douching, nothing like that. That was it. There was no other restriction except like take it easy the next day or two. Don't drive if you're on the pain meds. That was doctor's order. So that's what I did. Um, by day five or six, I went shopping and had a 30 minute walk and I came home and guys, I was gushing blood. It was like, what the heck? I mean, I like bled through my underwear, bled through everything, bled through my pants. It was like, I've never seen anything like that. I would sit on the toilet and it would just flow into the water. You'd look into the bowl and it was red. Not white, not kind of reddish, like if you've had a heavy period. I'm talking like I was just like dripping blood. It was crazy. I was so scared. And it was a Saturday, so of course they're out clothes and I was like, oh my gosh. So I just changed and changed it and changed it. And then a few hours later, it just completely stopped again. And that was a week ago, over a week ago. And I have... Again, if I had worn a pad, I would not have filled it up in a whole week. It's like, why? I guess it was like overexertion, but five or six days out, I would think I could go walking and then shopping. I don't know. So I just wanted to be honest with you guys about the DNC. It wasn't awful. Um, I did have some like mild cramping and, um, and then I want to talk about a couple of things. So if you don't want to hear the rest, you don't have to, but I wanted to talk about sex after a DNC because I was scared. 
Um, I went back for my follow-up Friday, so it was like a week and a half, almost two weeks since my procedure, and he did say, okay, you know, you're not bleeding anymore, um, I don't even need to check you, let's go ahead and test your HCG again and make sure it's coming down at a good rate to rule out molar pregnancies, like the tissue that they biopsied, um, the pathologist said it didn't necessarily look like a molar pregnancy, but there was some spongy tissue, and your HCG was really high. It could have been really high because you were, had twins, or it could have just been a molar pregnancy. And that spongy tissue makes me think it could be a sticky molar pregnancy. And I just want to make sure we got everything, so let's test your HCG. So he drew my HCG, and he said, if it went down from that 65, 67,000 down to like 10 or 20,000, I'll feel pretty good about it, and we'll test it again in a week and make sure it's coming down at a good rate. Okay. So he tested it, and it was only 497. So I'm like, yes, that means it's not a molar pregnancy, probably. I'm going to still test it again next Friday, but um, the, um, the fact that it's not a molar pregnancy means we can try again as soon as I get a regular cycle again, not waiting six months or a year after a molar pregnancy to make sure that you're good. Um, and that that's a relief, but I'm still waiting another week to make sure that it isn't molar like it goes down from 497 down to 100 and then I can assume that once I get my period back that I'm okay to try again and we have gotten pregnant three times now on the first try or without trying so we're preventing till I get my period back because that's what the doctor wanted and then after that fair game I guess we can get pregnant again so that would mean instead of March 4th due date with those twins it would be more like very end of June if we were like really lucky and caught the first go probably more like July or August for the next baby in case you guys are wondering um but yeah I was scared for sex I was really scared because after having a baby it was awful it was absolutely dreadful and I <laughs> I waited the six to eight weeks and I was like hell no this is awful I do not want any part of this it was bad no it was not bad I was scared and it was tender a little bit um and I didn't want anything um really hard or vigorous I'm trying to be like keep it clean here but um it wasn't bad it was fine so if that was something you were worried about um there are stitches up there I can feel them and it's weird but um other than that I feel pretty normal I'm back to myself um still a little emotional and I haven't told a lot of people that's the reason I don't tell people now is in two years of marriage um we've been told we lost four babies it was the first baby we were told we lost Daisy and then twins. Four babies in two years. Pretty awful. Not the way I plan my life, but we're going to have one more child, or let me rephrase that. If it ends up being twins again, fine, but we're doing this and having one more successful delivery. If it ends up with quadruplets, I'm having quadruplets and we'll have five kids, but you know what I'm saying? Whether it's a girl or a boy, we already have a girl, we're done after one more live baby at delivery. So, I am not discouraged from trying again. I My doctor said that because I had a healthy pregnancy in between the, the two miscarriages that I'm not at higher risk. And the fact that I have multiple sclerosis and I'm on that medicine or the fact that I am overweight or the fact that I got pregnant again really quickly or because I only had one postpartum cycle or because none of that. He's like, don't, you didn't do anything wrong. Like, it's just, you're no more likely to have a miscarriage again in the future than you were the first try. It's one in six people have a miscarriage and it's even higher when it's twins. So, okay. So he said, you know, get a cycle back. I'll see you in a week for your blood draw. Get a cycle back. You can try again. And he said, come in immediately. As soon as you find out you're pregnant, I want you in my office. I want to know your progesterone. And he's like, immediately, if, even if you're borderline high or low, I'm getting you on progesterone supplement right away. It's like, okay. So that is that. Um, I am not happy about it. Sorry if I seem like really uppity. I've had coffee, but... Basically, I wanted to try to keep this not emotional, so I'm not like getting overwhelmed, but lots of our our plans were changed and it was sad, you know, like uh, planning to move Daisy to her big girl bedroom and move it to the nursery and I was looking at furniture for the nursery and I was thinking about names like crazy and, you know, our vacation, I was going to be just out of my first trimester and I was like, okay, maybe I won't be puking by then and you just have all these thoughts like I won't be able to go on the rides on our trip because I'll be pregnant and now it's like, oh, I guess I can't. You know so I've had some alcohol I've had some really hot baths I've had soft cheeses hot dogs pepperonis um, I had raw runny eggs well not raw eggs but runny eggs on my burger the other day and I dipped my toast in it and it was amazing I'm just trying to live my life you know I'm trying not to let it get me down I have done so much crying these last few weeks and the wondering if it's a miscarriage or if it's not over that like week between ultrasounds is crazy um, all I can say is if you're going through this, it freaking blows. It sucks. And it's life. It's amazing that we can create body, like a life inside of our bodies. 
that and it sucks that one in six ends in miscarriage and nobody talks about it and that's why I wanted to make this video because I wanted people to know that it happens and that doesn't mean you should be discouraged it doesn't mean you did anything wrong and a DNC is not the end of the world it sucked I was scared to be intubated I was scared to be put under I was scared but it was fine I woke up my throat was a little sore and I was fine and I'm here I'm living I'm enjoying my daughter and I am enjoying that I have a little bit more time to spend with her I'm sure as hell gonna try again as soon as I'm able but I'm just living in the moment and enjoying that I just have one kid right now and that I'm not throwing up and I'm hopeful so um, my husband and I have done a lot of talking and a lot of thinking on it and we're gonna try again in a month if they if that's what my body wants me to do then that's what we're gonna do we have gone through this now three times in two years sort of you know so we'll just keep moving on um, I had a lot of videos planned for you guys I filmed a four week update five weeks six weeks seven week eight week my pregnancy announcement video I filmed my the reactions of my mom and my mother-in-law I had that on video I had wardrobe outfit like suggestions for how to make your normal clothes last into your first and second trimester when you're pregnant I had video like three of those like shirts dresses and pants I had um, videos on like must-haves for different stages of pregnancy I had all these videos I haven't decided if I'm gonna edit them or put them up or put them up with a disclaimer in the description box but it's really hard to keep up on my channel and have even one or two videos a week is like so hard so I'm so mad that this happened because I am now like 10 videos in the hole and I would have three four videos for you guys a week for the next few weeks if that hadn't happened so it's a bummer obviously that's not the big problem or why I'm sad but I just wanted you guys to know that that's why I haven't had as much content lately is because I had all these pregnancy videos I was planning on releasing right around now when I would have been 11 or 12 weeks pregnant <sighs> anyway um, hang in there if you're going through this it really sucks but hopefully you can see by my attitude going forward that I'm hopeful and that I am relieved that it's probably not a molar pregnancy and we can try again I know if you went through IVF to get pregnant or if it took you a long time to conceive with your first probably very 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 discouraging even worse than just being sad about losing the baby that you had but hang in there you'll get through it we will too thanks for watching